Good morning. I'm going to show you, well, it could be evening, who knows. I'm going to show you what we're going to do to assemble the new uh, and improved warping mill. So first step, take, well, unpack everything as I've done here. Uh, take the uh, tube with the uh, bearing uh, already attached. We're going to take the short uh, main plate and put it over top and press the, the bearing into the uh, cutout here and next we're going to put that remaining piece inside the bearing like this and finally tip it over and take these screws uh, they are the four and a half by 45 I believe and we're going to put it in here so we're fastening the two uh, main plates together and you're locking those uh, bearings uh, in place. The whole system is going to be dry, uh, uh, spinning on two uh, different bearing rings. As you saw, the, uh, the first bearing ring is already embedded in this bottom plate that you would that uh, is uh, in your box, and the second one is fixed to the tube, and it's already pre-glued, so it's not going to come loose or anything. And together and it turns nice and smoothly okay so we'll get ready for the next step okay so now we're going to attach the uh, base uh, to the uh, center axle post uh, first thing the little feet buffers and screw them in place I guess it's pretty I'm jumping right in but it's these two uh, uh, pieces that are identical. There's only two of them like it that we're, we're taking. One side has <clears throat> a hole on each end, the other side does not. We flip them with the two holes on the uh, underside facing up and then take these uh, buffers with the small flathead screws, put the screw inside the foot, the buffer, and screw it in place. First, we take the uh, uh, M6 50 millimeter carriage bolt, slip it inside from this side, use a rubber mallet. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit, as you may have already seen, in that I've disassembled this particular warping mill. So the square point of the carriage bolt is already pounded in here. So what you will do is put the bolt in place, take a hammer or rubber mallet, and hit this in so that the square part of the bolt goes into the wood. That's what prevents it from turning, okay? So I've got a little bit of a uh, head start because that square piece is already there. Uh, so anyway, we're gonna put that bolt in place, flip it over like this, same thing for the other one. And then we're gonna take this and put it in like that. Take your square knob. this up just keep tightening until you finally pull that that screw right all the way in you can see here now it's nice and flush and do the same thing on the other side What this allows you to do with star knobs used to be uh, wing nuts. You loosen them and now you can turn these like this. So when you fold the whole thing, then uh, that's how you fold or unfold these pieces. Put them back, tighten it up. And you've got your stable platform for your warping mill. Okay, and now we'll go uh, on to putting the uh, the arm 
arms together. Okay, so now we're going to put together the other tubes and the cross pieces that are going to make the, uh, yeah, the, the, the actual winder itself. Uh, I've already put in one of the screws. So you take these uh, eight screws with the small um, uh, bushings here, put a bushing over top of the screw, and you put it inside this hole, and then we're going to screw that into the cross piece here. So I've done that on this side, so now one side is done. Flip it over, take the next one, and we're going to do the same thing over here. You notice on the, um, on the pole, you've got a hole that goes all the way through. One side is small, one side is large. Use the large hole to put your screw in because the head will disappear all the way in. And you do it on the outside, then everything sticks out and you don't have enough length in your screw. So just be careful about that in positioning. And uh, I think that's pretty much all you need to really or worry about there. The rest just lining it up and screwing it in. Unless you have a magnetic tip screwdriver, then it's gonna grab it. Okay, so this is put together. We're going to put that aside for a second. I'm going to get the next two cross pieces. And here comes the fun part as soon as I have this next piece connected. I'm going to do the exact same thing as we did before. Find the hole. last two makes is the trickier part. So you can put this one like this, grab the first one, and put it over top. And you see how they have to inter intermesh. So that's why we need to do it like this. So, gonna, so that everybody's clear, we've got the one with one pole on the bottom. I lay, lay this one over top, you can put it above or below. We'll put it above like this. And then lift the bottom one that only has one pole up so that they're intermeshed. Grab the screw. Now we've got this ready to attach to the main pole and we'll reposition and we'll come right back to that. One thing I want to point out, if you lay these in the way I've described, the pole on the one side is going to be a little bit shorter, a little bit longer than a pole on the other side and that variance is irrelevant. Everything clears the table, everything rolls around just fine, it does what it needs to do, the fact that they're well, uh, every other one is slightly higher or shorter than the other makes no difference just don't be alarmed when you see that now here we are ready to mount the whole shebang together uh, i'm going to take this you see i've moved to the floor because i need some room to drop this on and i'm just going to place it over top slide it down all the way like that 
And you can see it's just going to want to keep going. So now I'm going to reposition again. We're going to get back up on the table so we can show this uh, at a working height. Okay, here we are. We're ready to uh, fasten these. Right now, if you, uh, number one, everything's sitting too low. It's sitting, the poles are resting on the, on the table. That's not going to work. So I'm going to use this hole right here in the two to help position. I'm going to lift everything up, hold it, and put this nail through. That's going to tell us the height that we want the whole thing set at. Now, there's another way you can do this if you want in the, uh, before you put it all on in the first place, you can put that nail in place. That's also another way. Uh, so now we've got everything at the right height. You see right here, we have a hole. Uh, that's gonna be used to fasten this, uh, this cross piece to the, the uh, uh, center axle so that it's in a fixed position. We've got the same thing on the other one, and again, up here as well. So we're gonna use these uh, uh, M6 uh, machine screws. They're 20 millimeters long. We're gonna put it inside here, hand tighten as far as it'll go. Okay, so uh, once you've got this hand tightened, use your screwdriver and tighten uh, completely see that well with my hands in the way. I tighten it so it's not going to move. Then we're going to put this at approximately square and we're going to do the same thing with the screw on the bottom here. Okay, so make sure you tighten these really good and snug because the what you're doing is you're fixing these cross pieces to the center axle pole uh, because the whole thing is, is turning on the ball bearings, whereas our older model, uh, actually uh, the, the, the center post was, was uh, fixed and, you, um, and the, these pieces turned on the hole itself. So uh, a little bit different mechanics. So I'm going to put these ones in place as well on the bottom here. The last thing I want to mention here is that every time you want to fold the loom, you do need to loosen these so that the whole piece will collapse. So you don't have to undo it a lot, just loosen so that, that this piece can turn. Same thing here. Same thing here. So it's just giving it some freedom to move and then they'll, they'll collapse like this and as I said before loosen this loosen this turn turn this one and then you can tighten these and now the whole mill can be moved and stored flat under a bed or against uh, the uh, behind a door or anything like that so it makes a very very portable and, and handy for uh, functional, let's put it that way. Okay, I'm gonna continue with the assembly. So now we're gonna put the, uh, um, these pieces where the dowels for making your cross are going to be connected. Uh, we're gonna put them in place and that fixes the, the height. So we're just gonna lift it up over top here and slide it, um, slide it on. Um, if your uh, poles are, are, if they're not square, this won't fit. So if, if you're finding that, hey, my, my, uh, this bar doesn't fit, just extend them out and, and make these pieces square and that'll, be, that'll fix that problem. Next, take the uh, longest of your uh, carriage bolts and put one through the hole here. Uh, again, it needs to be, the square part of the carriage bolt needs to be tapped in. So take your rubber mallet and hit it in. Uh, I've got the luxury of having disassembled this one, so it's not quite the same. Uh, then 
you can see it here. You're going to put a washer over top and then use the wing nut and we're going to fasten that in place. And if you're not getting this carriage bolt fully engaged, then just tighten your, your wing nut a little bit, tap it a little further, tighten it further, tap it, and, and just repeat that process until you get it nice and tight and that the, the ca head of the bolt is flush with the wood, okay? Tightening this wing nut allows you to fix the position uh, vertically. So if you, you may want to have, you know, if you're doing a really long warp, you're gonna to wanna to have this at the highest position. If it's less than, uh, you know, not quite as long, you can put it here, whatever's convenient for you, uh, whatever you need. And then we need to do the same thing down below here. The last step is to uh, install the pegs. So we're gonna put a, the shortest of the carriage bolts here through. Uh, and again, you're gonna to need to take a, a, um, a rubber mallet and tap these in so the carriage bolt head gets sucked right inside here. And we're putting this on, put a washer on and fasten. Now you got five different positions to put your uh, pegs, you know, depends on, on your rhythm and where you want them across here. We've got three pegs for each uh, end. go and that's your warping wheel thanks for watching and hopefully that helps you uh, get yours put together